got some knives to take pictures of today. I was set up outside, but it is like 34 degrees outside. I'm not interested in hanging out in the sun in that temperature. So I brought my little photo set up inside. This here, I think is gonna work. Essentially what we've got is this little light box. And what it is is a diffusion cloth and then a black background. You can swap that out. You can put different colors. I usually just leave it black. And then some type of a prop that I sit my knives on. This is just some big old chunk of steel. You have no clue where I got it from, but that's all that is. Anything works. Wood is really cool. And uh, for these shots, I'm basically just gonna put my light right there. Now, one of the critical things to remember about photography, and if anybody tells you different than this, they're, they're wrong. If you want to really understand photography, this is the most important thing. Photography is light. That's it, that's all. I used to be a photographer for about three and a half years. Um, I focused primarily on fashion. weird. I really enjoyed fashion photography, but the bummer is there's not a huge demand for fashion photographers in Calgary. Uh, I've been offered jobs in Toronto where there's a little bit more of the fashion industry, but I have no desire to live in Toronto. But I did shoot photography for about three years, and in that time, I learned quite a bit. I, I was sponsored by Pocket Wizard and Low Pro, the bags, they sponsored me. I actually won top 25 emerging photographers in Canada one year from Photo Life magazine. But the key to remember with photography is photography is light. Let me spit on my gum. You see, even by its very nature, what a camera is doing is capturing light and storing that, recording it, whether it's on uh, a digital processor, a digital sensor, and then converting it to a file, or if you're storing it on film. You're burning light into that film, and then you're stopping that process until it's developed, and then you're kind of bringing that all out. But really, all cameras do is capture reflections of light. Also, think about this. Some of the world's greatest photographers could make anything look interesting. You could find like an old coffee cup laying in the gutter. And if the light was hitting it at just the right moment in time, you could take a photograph of that and it would be very visually interesting. You'd, you'd be brought into that picture. And that is because of the way the light is moving around the objects. Now I get asked a lot, you know, how do you take pictures of your knives? And the most important thing to think about, it doesn't really matter what gear you're using. Obviously gear does make a difference, but light, you want that, that knife or whatever it is that you're photographing, you want it lit properly. I used to do some family photography and they'd be like, oh, it's a really bright blue sky, it's a sunny day, it's perfect for photos. Not the case at all. That's the worst type of light, it's a very harsh light and absolutely the worst light for photography. Uh, the last wedding I shot, I stopped shooting weddings years ago, but I did shoot my sister-in-law's wedding and that was the perfect day for light. It was overcast, in fact, the leaves were just starting to turn and we had this incredible fall foliage on the trees, but the light, the cloud cover made everything just perfect, just dreamy. I didn't have to do anything except for take the picture. But that's what you need to understand. So, a really practical little setup as far as being a, uh, you know, a knife maker who wants to get good pictures of their, uh, of their knives is just a little setup like this. Now, the key lights I'm using is this big window light behind me. I've got this little light just adding a little bit of kicker right here, and I'm, and I'm probably going to bring a little bit of a light right in here. The idea is we want to isolate the subject, but we want light to do certain things. One thing I like to show quite often when I'm photographing, when I'm taking knives, if, if I sharpen the knife already, I want to see the little reflection of the secondary bevel where we've sharpened it. Um, Sometimes you want to light up details. You'll want a little sparkle on the spine of the knife. Uh, different knives need to be photographed differently. And the one other thing you want to remember, if you're doing this to sell your own knives, is that the, the Photoshop can, can get you in trouble. Ideally, you're not trying to make your knife look any better than it really is, but you want it to look as good as possible. So steer clear of a much post-processing. Some people remove scratches in their blades uh, in Lightroom or Photoshop. It's so easy to do, but that's dishonest, right? I mean, you can't do that. You need to actually show the knife as it is, but if you can light it properly, it's more interesting and it kind of is like, wow, that looks so good. So again, as I was saying that photography is light, there's a few different ways you control the light. Uh, the one area is actually the subject itself. It's lighting the thing you're taking the photograph of. Obviously we've got our diffusion cloth here, we can bring in lights and we can actually control the light on the subject. The other area where you control the light is how your camera interprets that light. Couple quick things to understand. 
aperture. Aperture is the hole that's in the camera's lens. Typically, the more expensive the glass, the bigger the hole is, the smaller the aperture number. This here that I'm using right, well, this here that I'm using is a Canon 50mm f1.2. That means it's got a monstrously large hole to let the light in. That also means it has a really shallow depth of field, so that the focal plane, the part that's in focus, is very, very small. That will separate your image from the background. You can blur out the background, give it some bokeh. And then the other ways you control it is with your shutter speed, how quickly open and close that curtain to let the light in, and then your ISO. So how sensitive your, your processor or your film is at receiving that light, how quickly it's going to burn that image onto there. So those are the ways you control the light in the camera, then you can also control the light on the subject. So right off the hop here, let me just try shooting a couple of images. Let's switch this to camera, and then I'm just going to see what this looks like. Um, shooting this fairly wide open, we're at f2, no we're at f1.2 now. Yeah, that's... That's okay, but it's not all that interesting. I would like to get this up like this somehow. So I'm gonna see if I can find something to set behind there that I won't see, so that I can actually get a little bit of the light traces of the secondary bevel there. Especially when you've got like a stone wash blade like this one, it's a really nice contrast and it just gives a little bit more uh, something else for your eye to be drawn to and be like, hey, that's different. An eraser, too big. Don't use erasers. Okay, I might have found something. This is a little T-bolt. There, I think I can get a shot without that T-bolt being in the way. Boom, right off the bat, I like that image better because now I've got the contrast between the bevel and the satin. We're getting somewhere. I'm not saying we're done, but we're getting somewhere. The one thing I'm thinking is maybe there's too much light uh, hitting this right now. I think a little bit too much focus is being drawn towards the shine on the steel and not so much the knife. If I had a super shiny knife, obviously that would take more of the light and it'd be more reflective. But this is a fairly subdued finish on this blade, so I don't want this thing to be shining and popping more than my blade. So I need to come up with something to cover this up with. I always carry a hanky for moments like this. Oops. Oh, I'm not feeling that either. <laughs> All right, so it was not working in here. Wasn't happy. So sometimes that's part of photography. You have to change. Actually, that's like the huge part of photography. You have to always change it up. So really simply, I took that exact same uh, pop-up photo booth thing and I just took it outside. Basically, I've got the sun behind it and I put a piece of white, uh, sorry, gray paper. This is actually proper photo backdrop paper. And uh, that's all I've done. Well, it's a little windy, so it's gonna get a little crazy. Uh, but now what I'm able to do is get a much softer light. And naturally, we just have really amazing highlights, you know, along right here and like in these holes. And so that's it. That's this is like the photo setup for these images. And you can see, I mean, really, this looks like a studio. This looks like a professional photograph. When really, it's just set up out on the sidewalk next to my bicycle. So that is what a lot of my day, uh, my afternoon is going to be. Uh, even though I don't want to shoot outside, sometimes that's the best place. Uh, in the winter time it even works. I do, I try to do almost all my photography outside because you've got the best, the greatest quality, the most powerful light, the sun. It's just out there. If you can manipulate it, diffuse it, soften it up a little bit, a cheap little light box like that. I mean, I don't know, they're like 40 bucks. And then dream up your own creations for stuff to set your knives on. Uh, you know, some people like to create a little scene. You could get some, some hide of an animal or tools or something like that. But the biggest thing is just soften that light and think about some highlights on the blade. Um, those photo booths, absolutely fantastic. You know, when I used to do photography, like I'll put an image up right here. Now this image was a, a friend of mine. That's my mom's car, it's a 56 T-Bird. And we basically just headed out, this is outside of Rocky Ford, Alberta, like a dead highway. But I used five different lights to light this image. I had two lights on the side of the car, I had two lights on the model, and then one on the grill of the car. The reason I did that is because with the sun behind the subject, uh, she would have been a complete shadow and, and the sides of the car would have been completely dark. You wouldn't have been able to see that if I still wanted to retain the color in the sky. 
I mean, I could have exposed it for the model, but then everything out that sky would just be white and it just be totally blasted because it was so bright out there. But what I was able to do was expose for the sky, kind of bring everything down. And then with them being too dark, I used some lights to pop them and I filled that in. I boosted that up. And so again, really there's very little post-production done to this image. It took me about three minutes in, in Lightroom and this image was created by using light. So I guess what I would hope that you might take away from this video is, uh, you know, I'm going to be doing some of these pictures from my website just with my phone. You know, I've got the iPhone 8 Plus and the cam, it takes phenomenal photos. I honestly don't know that I have a need. Now, obviously, if you're a professional photographer, uh, these things are still awesome. I like the speed that you can shoot at in full manual. That's another thing. If you really want to learn photography, uh, turn it to this little M button. Put your camera on that M. What that is, is full manual, meaning that you control your shutter speed, you control your aperture, and you have complete control of what happens to the light in that photograph. And that is the best way to learn about what light does. Sometimes if you're taking images and it's kind of like, hey, hey, whatever, underexpose it a bit. You know, you got the little exposure meter, the bars that tell you, okay, this is perfect exposure. Try going this way, try going that way. Some images you overexpose them, it's just like, wow, that is so different. Or you can underexpose them by a stop or two, and it's kind of like, that is amazing the difference that it makes. So, photography is light. I hope you get that, I hope you think about that. And just look at some of the great images, the great photographs of the world. They are all excellent at capturing light whether it's the light in the sky or the light of a subject, the face, light in the eyes, light, 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 photography is light, 100%, all day, every day, and that's all you really need to know about photography. All this stuff is just minor adjustments to get you to the light. Oh, real quickly, I should tell you also what I use to edit my images. So, I'll take pictures with my DSLR and I'll import them to my phone and I will edit everything on my phone because they're cheap. Um, Snapseed, free, it's a Google app, I do believe, and that does a great job at, at you know, you can add text to your images, you can tweak things, even raw images. It's got settings to adjust the raw files when you take raw images. Uh, definitely take raw images with your SLR. Uh, a raw image is flat when you just look at it, but you have a lot more information to control and adjust there. Uh, and then VSCO Cam is one, and I don't, I think they have a free version. I have a paid version of it, but that will allow you to give some of those really interesting uh, vintage like faded looks. And I, I just really like VSCO. I like the, the interface of it. I like what I can do with it and then uh, that's those are pretty much the only two that I use if I am doing it on my computer I will use Lightroom uh, but really most of the stuff it's just such a pain in the butt I mean at my computers for editing videos if I need to quickly take a couple of pictures and and you know put them on my website I'm just gonna edit them on my phone just because it's so convenient and I can do it whenever boom 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 so that's pretty much it nothing too complicated nothing rocket sciencey and uh, I've got to get back to work I've got about five more knives to take pictures of thanks for watching guys Cheers.